This is WBCR in Bloomfield, New Jersey. The time is 1131. Welcome to the premiere of DIY World Improvement. I'm your host, Catherine Carlozzi. If you pay attention to the daily news, it's generally depressing enough to send you back to bed to pull the covers over your head. But I've always found it hopeful that all around us are individuals who recognize some of what's wrong with the world, roll up their sleeves, and get quietly to work fixing it. As a business and speech writer and as a board member of the New York Women in Communications Foundation, I've been fortunate to meet and work with many of these remarkable, resourceful individuals. Over the next three months, I'm going to provide a forum where these do-it-yourselfers can tell their stories. To find my first guest, all I had to do was open the front door and walk across the street. Until recently, most of the world knew Nancy Uslan as Mrs. Batman, wife of Michael Uslan, executive producer of the Batman movies. But she is becoming known as the founder of something called the Books and Beyond Project. This unique teaching and service learning program brings together three diverse groups of students, one each in Bloomfield, New Jersey, Bloomington, Indiana, and Kaniki, Rwanda. Each has different needs, and these needs are all being met as the students work and learn together. How Books and Beyond came into being is a story that began in 2005 with a trek to see the endangered mountain gorillas of Rwanda. Nancy exemplifies the saying that once you visit Africa, you can't shake the dust off your shoes. It just seems to be a place that changes those who visit it forever. Nancy, thank you for being my test pilot guest. Hey, Kath. Um, I am so used to you asking me to walk across the street to feed your cat. But having you ask me to be your first guest, well, I'm really honored to be here. Well, Dodger the Cat's grateful, and I am too. Talk about the impact that that gorilla trek had on your life. Um, I, uh, I have to start off just by saying that I love animals, and it was because of this love of animals that I went on this trip to Rwanda to, uh, to see the endangered mountain gorillas. But what happened was I came away with a love of a country and its people who were going through this recovery process from a horrific genocide just 11 years earlier. I knew I needed to find a way to help them heal. So when I got back to New Jersey, I went into this mania phase for about six months. I was trying to decide what it was I could do to help, and then it hit me. Education. I remember that manic phase really, really well. So once you decided on education, you know, how did you start coming up with the finalized idea and implementing? I went back to the place that I call Tara. You know, like in Gone with the Wind, Michael and I attended Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana, and we go back all the time. It's a place where I still go to find answers. I was introduced to the director of the IU Global Village Living and Learning Center. It's a residence hall for students who share an interest in global issues. I asked the director if he'd be interested in developing a program where Global Village students would aid Rwandan students. Around the same time, I was um, introduced to Allie Nagel, and Allie is a fifth grade teacher at the team schools in Newark, New Jersey. And that's one of the KIPP schools, isn't it? That's correct. Well, Allie wanted to start an African-focused project to engage her primarily African-American students. I introduced Allie to Lauren Calderera, the assistant director of the Global Village, and they both really, really liked the idea of college students mentoring middle and high school kids while working on a project to benefit students in Rwanda. I had already made a connection to the school in Rwanda, so that's how I chose the Kabwende School in Kanigi as the third leg of what we call our tripod. And I know that Kabwende is near uh, Volcanoes National Park where you start your trek and that you um, were taking a little walk before you took off and ran into some kids from the school, one of whom spoke English and asked you to send him a dictionary, which I know that, that you did. Give us an overview of the project and how it actually works. Well, team school students write and illustrate children's stories. They're mentored in that writing process by Global Village students from Indiana. The stories are then collected and published in an anthology called The World is Our Home. The stories encompass an English literacy and critical thinking component. Uh, this is really important because in 2008, Rwandan President Paul Kagame mandated that English become the official language in the classroom and for the whole country. That's like telling us that as of tomorrow, Kathy, all Americans are going to speak English. Yeah, I mean, be, I'm sorry, Chinese. It would be total, total chaos. 
There are no books in English, and most teachers don't speak English. In addition, President Kagame said he wanted to do more to see Rwandans go into the private sector. Well, in order for Rwandans to go into the private sector, they needed to develop critical thinking skills. Our books, plus a curriculum developed by IU Professor Beth Samuelson, addresses all those needs. And I know that uh, you had the opportunity to meet President Kagame on several uh, occasions. So four years after your 2005 trip to see the gorillas, you went back to Rwanda. Only this time you went back with a group of students and teachers from team in Indiana University. And you went back with 2,000 copies of The World is Our Home, which you put into the hands of the Kabwende students and their teachers. Talk about what it was like to do that. It was an incredibly moving experience. As we handed out these books to the students, they looked at us as if to say, what is this? We had to use sign language to make them understand this book is yours. You can take it home. Before this, there were no books in the classroom except for the ones the teachers had. And the teachers painstakingly wrote every word from each page on the blackboard. Students learned by rote memorization. There's no real interaction between teacher and pupil, Kathy, and our book has changed the way teachers teach. Yeah, it had to be an amazing thing to affect something like that for the first time. It also had to be an amazing thing for your group to meet all of these students. Um, how did they react to you? How did they react to the student members of the group? Well, all of a sudden, we appear at their school in mass. And as you expect, they, were, uh, they weren't surprised to see us, but they certainly didn't know who all these people were. We had uh, students with us, and they reacted very differently to the students than they did to us as adults. Our students make great ambassadors, and they immediately found ways to communicate with their Rwandan peers. I, that I can imagine. That I can imagine. I sat down with one of the students who was on that trip. Um, Zanique Underdu is currently a ninth grader at TEAM, and uh, I met her in December and we talked about her reactions to Rwanda. Here's some of what she had to say. The people first, very different, like the whole demeanor and like, you know, people say like first impressions are everything. Looking on, it's very easy to judge and say like, oh, I don't want to be here. Oh, it's very, it seems like very, I wouldn't say tense, but very different. I think Rwanda is like the kind of country where you have to like not be afraid and you have to like think deeper. And like the first question everybody asks me like when I say I went to Rwanda, they're like, oh, like how was it? Like did you feel okay? And a good thing about myself was like when I went, I didn't have like a preconception of like what things would be like and I didn't like say, oh, like I won't do this, I won't do that, or the people are going to be like this because I don't know, you know, I don't know what it's going to be like. The level of appreciation that they have is, I mean, almost opposite of like the way it is here. What do you mean? If we say like we're hungry, you know, it's just like, oh, let's go get something to eat. Dunkin' Donuts is nearby. Well, like if we don't have the taste for Dunkin' Donuts, I'm not going to go to Dunkin' Donuts. I want Starbucks. I mean, it's whatever you have. I mean, whatever you can get. I mean, if that's yeah. sweet potatoes, the thought doesn't come that like, I don't want sweet potatoes. It's not like, uh oh, I don't have the taste for that. It's yeah. like, I'm hungry. I need to eat. And this is what's there. And that's what, you know, I'm going to take. I mean, I think you would think it's difficult or you would think like the way we live sounds so much better, but you find yourself being so much happier. I'd rather be happy and have like a peace of mind than like have, you know, the newest phone or, you know, the newest iPod or something like that. And I think that's the main difference and which is very important. And like the fact that like a people a lot of people say like, Oh, um, you know, you weren't scared to be in Rwanda and the fact that they know how to be happy makes it so much more makes you feel so much more comfortable being there. Mm -hmm. And like you can I mean, I didn't even think about, you know, things that happened in the past there like as I was there because I didn't feel that type of, you know, tension or environment. Mm -hmm. And I felt like so it was like a sanctuary like I was just happy. As I talked with her I really got the feeling that this had changed her um, in many many ways and I know that you're set to deliver volume two of the book this summer? 
We uh, we already delivered volume uh, oh, two in um, 2010, and that was incredibly exciting because um, volume two included stories that the Rwandan students wrote. Um, it was the first opportunity for them to put pen to paper, Kathy, and it was the first opportunity for them to think creatively. They got to see their names in the book, the final book, as published authors, like the American students did. I've had the opportunity to read the books, and they are the stories are interesting, and especially the stories that the Rwandan students wrote. But I know now that they're working on um, Volume 3, and that is the one that you're going to deliver this summer. How exactly does the writing process work? Well, in the, the whole program actually starts in September, uh, when the school year starts. In September, we take the team students from Newark to Indiana University, and they meet their writing partners um, while they uh, are there that weekend. For three days, they live on campus and they experience college life. They're taught by college professors how to write for non-English speaking students. Then over the next few months, the Global Village and team students communicate different ways through Skype, yeah. email, and phone calls. Um, and they work on their stories while they're uh, communicating with each other. In January, the IU students travel to Newark to finalize those stories. To find my first guest, all I had to do was open the front door and walk across the street. Until recently, most of the world knew Nancy Uslan as Mrs. Batman, wife of Michael Uslan, executive producer of the Batman movies. But she is becoming known as the founder of something called the Books and Beyond Project. This unique teaching and service learning program brings together three diverse groups of students, one each in Bloomfield, New Jersey, Bloomington, Indiana, and my test pilot guest. Hey, Kath. Um, I am so used to you asking me to walk across the street to feed your cat. But having you ask me to be your first guest, well, I'm really honored to be here. Well, Dodger the Cat's grateful, and I am too. Talk about the impact that that gorilla trek had on your life. Um, I, uh, I have to start off just by saying that I... But I've always found it hopeful that all around us are individuals who recognize some of what's wrong with the world, roll up their sleeves, and get quietly to work fixing it. As a business and speech writer and as a board member of the New York Women in Communications Foundation, I've been fortunate to meet and work with many of these remarkable, resourceful individuals. Over the next three months, I'm going to provide a forum where these do-it-yourselfers can tell their stories. This is WBCR in Bloomfield, New Jersey. The time is 11.31. Welcome to the premiere of DIY World Improvement. I'm your host, Catherine Carlozzi. If you pay attention to the daily news, it's generally depressing enough to send you back to bed to pull the covers over your head. Kaniki, Rwanda. Each has different needs, and these needs are all being met as the students work and learn together. How Books and Beyond came into being is a story that began in 2005 with a trek to see the endangered mountain gorillas of Rwanda. Nancy exemplifies the saying that once you visit Africa, you can't shake the dust off your shoes. It just seems to be a place that changes those who visit it forever. Nancy, thank you for being my